hello once again. This is me, Leonard Wells, broadcasting from Haslingdon, north of Manchester in the UK, on Sunday the 6th of December 2009. This is episode 3 of my vlog. And a vlog is a video blog. So a vlog is a video blog and a blog is a weblog. Having cleared that point, let's get on with it. With it. Looking at world problems, apart from climate change, which is heavily in the news at the moment with this conference in uh, Copenhagen or Copenhagen, depending where you come from, the next problem seems to me on a lot of people's lips is Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a far away country for most people and uh, it, it, in, in, in wars in the past in Afghanistan nobody has ever won with the possible exception of the Mongols centuries and centuries ago. Uh, it seems to me, if you think about war, very few people gain anything from a war. If you think about Nazi Germany, they started the war and ended up with their country being bombed flat by the United States and Great Britain. But in fact, what happened really was the Americans bombed it flat, certainly. But then they had to pay to rebuild it. So where did we get in the long run? So e effectively war doesn't solve any problems at all. It only creates problems. If you think about the war that we've just had in Iraq, to my mind it was a big mistake. If we'd wanted to remove Saddam Hussein, why on earth didn't we do it just after the first Gulf War, when we ejected him and his army from Kuwait so easily? With so little budget. Apparently, I, I understand, he was he had his helicopter standing by, ready to fly off, when because uh, he was expecting us to uh, come in and get him. I don't know why we didn't do it then. Hateful what though Saddam Hussein was, and hated by his people. I can't re recall his army attacking Britain or the US, which might have given us an excuse to retaliate. All that bloodshed and trillions of dollars, what an awful blot on our great history. What we could have done with the money. Oh, it beggars belief. And what is, what is the result? There are still great problems in Iraq. So it has a little bit of democracy, but there are still, I wouldn't like to walk about in Baghdad or Basra. And what has it done in the Middle East in general? It has given that crackpot country called Iran the opportunity to strut around as if it had suddenly become the leader of the free world. And I can foresee great problems if the Iranians uh, develop an atomic bomb. Because at some stage, somebody's going to set one off. And then it will be goodbye to the Middle East and all the Middle East oil. Can you imagine what would happen if the Iranians dropped an atomic bomb on Israel and the Israelis dropped one on Iran? It beggars, it, it, it beggars the imagination. Terrifying prospects.
However, coming back to Afghanistan, they may not, in Afghanistan, directly bomb London, but it is Afghanistan which produces 90% of the world's heroin. And this is shipped mostly to Europe and Russia, utterly destroying lives in the process. So, as far as I am concerned, Afghanistan has effectively been making war on us by growing poppies. Whatever their excuse, they claim to be Muslims. They claim to follow the Quran. But did, does it say in the Quran that you're permitted to destroy the lives of your, your uh, fellow human beings by producing substances like this and, and, and watching it being shipped to them and to their children? That's my main reason for accepting that our armies be there. Not because I want them to become democratic, because I doubt very much that they want to be democratic. Muslim countries, as a rule, are not too um, taken with the idea of democracy, because they have the Quran, and they believe the Quran should it gives them everything they need. So it's going to be very difficult ever to have a successful democracy in Afghan Afghanistan as we understand it. If it was left to me, I would also agree to invading Colombia with the aim of stopping the production of cocaine. However, we have a much easier solution with those two drugs, and that's to make those drugs legal. Switzerland and Portugal have done so. If you are addicted to either drug, you can go to a government clinic twice a day and get an injection. We did this in Britain until the 60s. And then we made the fatal blunder of making those drugs illegal. The United States made the same mistake with the prohibition of alcohol in the 20s and 30s. All that did was to make some people, the gangsters, immensely rich. Well, you could say that if people in the West did not take drugs in the first place, we wouldn't be in this situation. But, but there will always be human beings willing to try forbidden fruits, whether it be drugs, sex, alcohol, and even tobacco. So that doesn't help. If you think about it, actually, the world is a mad, 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 mad place because tobacco costs us billions and produces ill health all over the planet and yet it is legal. It's amazing that there are people actually out there who are quite happy to see you smoking because it brings them in big profits knowing full well that it will destroy your life and your health. With friends like these who needs enemies and when you actually look at the situation with tobacco, the tobacco companies pump into tobacco six times more nicotine than there is there in the first place, so that you're addicted from the very first couple of puffs. What kind of people want to do that to other people? Well, it, it's the same principle that makes those people who produce poppies and cocaine do so. Because it's the money. Money is the root of all evil, so they tell me. Well, think about it. Get in touch through YouTube, if you wish, and I will speak to you again tomorrow. Thank you, and good night, and God bless you all.